Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem non-overlapping intervals and this is actually a problem from the blind 75 list of questions that we've been working on. And we've actually been tracking that list of questions on this spreadsheet. You can see that I do have a video solution on the left side over here for pretty much every single problem in this list, except for a couple that we haven't gotten to yet. So today we will be doing the last interval problem in this list. You can see I solved the other interval related problems already. There's about like 70 people viewing it right now. So I hope that you guys are finding it helpful. And you can see conveniently, I made a YouTube playlist for all of the blind 75 solutions. Link to that will be in the description description as well if you do want to take a look. So now let's continue with the video. So this problem is definitely like most interval problems in that if you've solved other interval problems before, this one shouldn't be too difficult. But if you're new to interval problems, this one is kind of challenging. So we're given an array of intervals where each interval has a start value and an end value. And we want to return the minimum number of intervals that we have to remove from the list to make sure that the rest of the intervals are non-overlapping. So first question you should ask is what exactly is a overlapping interval? Well, assuming an interval looks something like this, right? It has some start value. Maybe the start value is one and the end value is two, right? Maybe we have another interval that starts at three and goes all the way to four. So definitely these two intervals are not overlapping. But what if we had uh, the interval starting over here. Maybe the end point is three, but the starting point is maybe 1.5, right? Obviously, in this case, these two intervals are overlapping, right? You can see, you know, right over here, this is the region that they're overlapping at. But the edge case comes when we have a interval, let's say, like this one that's going maybe starting from two and going all the way to three. Are these intervals overlapping? Technically, you know, this point at position two is overlapping, but technically these intervals are not considered overlapping, right? So if they have the same edge point, they do not count as overlapping. This edge case is very important to understand to solve this problem. Okay, so let's take a look at the first example, actually. So you can see I've drawn a few of the intervals, and you can see so far these three are not overlapping, right? But we're about to insert the last and fourth interval, one, three. So it starts at one and goes all the way until three. So now you can see that they are overlapping with the introduction of this interval. And things become really simple when you draw a picture, which is why I always recommend drawing a picture for complicated problems. So now we want to eliminate intervals. We want to eliminate the minimum number. It's obvious that we can just remove a single interval, this one that we just inserted to make the rest non-overlapping. But of course, that's not the only way we could do it. We could instead remove this interval and remove this interval. So instead we'd remove two intervals. That's clearly not the solution, but there are multiple ways to do it, which is why writing the algorithm for this problem can be kind of tricky. One definitely possible way to do this problem is brute force it, right? Go through every single combination, right? For every single interval, we can choose to remove this interval or to keep this interval. And if we have two choices for every single interval inside the list of intervals, then you know the time complexity to check every single possibility is gonna be two times two times two, basically two to the power of n, where n is the size of the input. So that's obviously not very efficient, but can we do better? And we definitely can, and it takes a greedy approach to solve this problem. When we're actually given this list of intervals, the ordering of them could be pretty random, right? But what you can see when we actually draw the picture, you know, why would we want to go through these intervals in a random order? Why would we want to look at this one, then look at this one, then this one, yeah, right? Like in just a completely random order. When you look at it this way, it kind of makes sense to want to go left to right, right? To see, okay, here, are they overlapping? Here, are they overlapping, et cetera, et cetera. And the easiest way to do that is to, to iterate through them in some kind of sorted order. You can probably do it sorted by the starting point or sorted by the ending point. I'm just going to stick with sorted by the starting point just because it's a little bit simpler for me, but I know that it works in both ways, for this problem at least. So when we iterate through these in sorted order, first we're gonna compare these two intervals, right? We wanna compare adjacent pairs of intervals, right? And let's actually ignore this example for just a second. Suppose we had just two intervals, right? One interval like this and one interval like this. Okay, they're in sorted order, right? And we're comparing adjacent pairs. So we're going to look at this one and look at this one. How do we know if they are overlapping? 
Well, if they're sorted by the starting point, we know that either they both have the exact same starting point or the second one has a starting point that's after the first one's starting point, and that's the case here. But again, how do we know if they're overlapping or not? Well, the easiest way to check is they're not overlapping if this one starts after this one ends, right? If the second one starts after the first one ends, then they're definitely not overlapping. But on the other hand, if the second one starts before the first one ends, then they're definitely overlapping, right? You can see that this is the point that they're overlapping at. Okay, so does that cover all of the cases? Well, there's one more case. Technically, that's slightly different. What if, you know, the first one is really long and the second one starts here, right? So it does come after this one, but it ends before the first one ends. This is a slightly different edge case. Again, they are overlapping. We can detect that with the same condition. This one starts before this one ends. So yes, they're overlapping. But now, suppose we had a third interval that comes next. Remember, we are traversing these in sorted order. So first we're gonna compare this one is first, this one is second. So then we're gonna compare these two together. Next, are we gonna be looking at this one and this one? In this case, yes. Because remember, if these two are overlapping, we don't have to remove both of them. We only have to remove one of them. So the choice is, are we gonna remove this one or are we gonna remove this one? Well, which one do you think we would rather remove? Would we wanna remove the one that ends first or the one that ends second? Of course, we'd wanna remove the one that ends first because then it's there's less of a chance that it's gonna overlap with the following intervals that come after. And remember, we want to minimize the number of intervals that we have to delete. In this example, with these three intervals, it doesn't matter. We could remove this one or remove this one. But let's look at another example. What if the third interval was like this, right? It's overlapping with this one. Then it becomes pretty obvious. We would want to remove this bottom interval rather than this top interval. And it depends on which one of these ends first. So that's how we're gonna decide which one to remove. And just to look at a third example, so what if they were overlapping like this? right? Of course, we're going to first compare these two intervals. Okay, yes, they're overlapping. And we can detect that because this one starts before this one ends. So now we have a choice. Do we remove this one or do we remove this one? Again, we're removing the one that ends first. So we're going to remove this one. And you can see exactly why, because now these two do not overlap. But what if instead we decided to remove this one? Well, we removed it, but it didn't help us because these two are still overlapping. We want to minimize that. So basically I just explained to you the exact algorithm that we're going to be using. We're going to sort the entire array based on the starting value. Then we're going to compare adjacent pairs and then use the conditions that I just mentioned. Now, what's the time complexity of this? Well, we're going to sort and then we're just going to iterate through the array a single pass, right? So the iterating is simple. It's just big O of N. We're just going to iterate through the entire array, but the sorting is where the bottleneck is. So that's what the overall time complexity is going to be. Big O log uh, N log N. And just to run the algorithm that I explained on this input example, because they have the first two starting values. So we're gonna have this array in sorted order based on the start values. We're actually gonna take the first interval and just take its end value and then keep track of it. Because since this is the first interval, there's nothing gonna be that comes before it on the left. Okay, so now we're gonna iterate through the intervals that come after this one. So the first interval is this one. It has the next start value. So we're gonna check is the start value uh, less than this one. Yes, they are, so they're overlapping. So which one are we gonna delete? The one with the larger end value. So we're gonna delete this one. We can leave this interval as is and save its end value so that we can compare it with the following intervals. So this is the interval that comes next. Is its start value less than the end value of the previous one? No, it's not. So we don't delete either of these intervals. But since we didn't delete either of these intervals, and since we know this one started after this one ended, we know that this one is gonna have a larger end value. So we're not gonna be using this one to compare anymore. We're gonna be using this end value to compare to the following intervals on the right side. Okay, so now let's look at this interval. 
And the next interval that's coming up is this one. So is this one starting before this one ends? Nope, it does not. So we don't delete either of these. And uh, we you know, set this to the new end value that we're gonna keep track of, but there's nothing that comes after it. So we're done here. We only had to remove one interval as you can see. So the answer in this case is one, which is what they also had in the output. So that's the entire algorithm. Now we can actually code it up. It's not too bad. Okay, so now let's get into everybody's favorite part, writing out the code. So remember, the first thing we wanna do is sort the list of intervals. So in Python, I can just say sort, and it'll actually sort it based on the entire pair. It'll first sort it based on the start value and then sort it based on the end value if there's a tie between the start. But you know, in Java and stuff, you can specify the key is just the start, or you can use just the end if you want to, and then uh, you can ch slightly change your algorithm if you're sorting by the end value. But the result that we're gonna keep track of is just the entire count that we have to remove. So initially it's gonna be set to zero. And remember, we're gonna initially keep track of the first end value in our sorted intervals. So we can get that just like this, intervals, the first interval, and we want its end value, which is at index one. Then we're gonna iterate through the remaining list of intervals. So we can iterate through the start and end value of the remaining intervals like this. And we want to start at index one, so we can specify like that in Python. And now we get to our if else case because we want to know are they overlapping or not. So they're not overlapping if the start value of the interval that we're looking at is greater than or equal to the previous end value. And remember, the equal is very important. That's the edge case we talked about at the beginning. If they're equal, they're technically not overlapping. And if they are not overlapping, the only thing we need to do is update our previous end, set it to the new end value, uh, because we know that the new end value is gonna be greater than the previous one. And the else case is if they are actually overlapping. And if they are overlapping, then we need to remove one of the intervals. So definitely we are gonna increment our result count by one because we have to remove one of these. Now the question is which one are we gonna remove and how are we actually even gonna handle that? Well, the only thing we actually need to update is our previous end because remember, we don't actually have to delete the interval in the array, we just have to count how many we delete. But we have we do have to update the previous end. Uh, remember, which one of these end values are we actually gonna keep? Which one of the intervals are we gonna keep? We are gonna keep the one that has the minimum end value. So we're gonna set previous end equal to the minimum of end and itself previous end. So that once we've updated this, we can use this new end value uh, in the future iterations of the loop. But that's actually the entire algorithm. Once we've done that, we just have to return the, the count of how many we deleted and then run the code and make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does work and it is pretty efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.